they have a, another way to see therapy, another way to, to heal, instead just focus on the talk therapy all the time, you know? Uh, and, and I think experiential therapy is actually transforming therapy now where mm. people can see the benefits of it instead of sitting there talking 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 all the time you see people that actually are actually starting to gain change from just being involved in using their hands more and doing like the weightlifting like how you guys have here you know the exercise that like you guys put so much energy into that and a lot of your clients i've seen have made major transformations from that you know and not thinking they're good enough yeah. And which a lot of people struggle with not only an addiction outside of that you mm. know uh, what's what's my value what's my worth you know but we really try to uh, push legacy and your purpose and how, how do i actually attain legacy you know believing in myself and receiving the love because the hardest thing people receive in programming is love you know like People see the rules and just the, the things that you guys give here as as, as as being stringent and like, you know, like, um, I can't live my life. But we're just guiding them to find their truth. And if they were to change their perspective when it comes to being in treatment, you know, their whole life would change. As you as a therapist start to explore all the different interventions and modalities and different ways and means to approach therapy, um, I've found that anything that's experiential mm-hmm. is a hundred percent way more effective than like, let's say typical talk therapy. Yes. And I'm going to tell you why. Here we are. Real recovery talk. I am your host, Tom Conrad. In today's episode, we've got B wood also known as Brian wood. How you doing, Brian? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks. And we also have Maya. Hello, Maya. Hi, Thomas. Maya is one of our primary therapists here at Rock Recovery Center, and I thought it would make sense for her to come on because we're going to be talking therapeutic stuff. And as we know, I'm not a therapist, so I wanted to have Maya come on so she could ask some proper questions. But first things first, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in on the podcast app, whichever one that you choose to use. And thank you for watching on YouTube. In the end, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, You can always reach us, info at realrecoverytalk.com. Again, that's info at realrecoverytalk.com. And ultimately, we want to help you turn your mess into your message, right? Absolutely. What's up, B-Wood? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Yeah, man. This has kind of been in the making. You wanted to schedule this out like six months in advance so you could prepare. And I'm like, (laughs) what are you preparing for? I don't know. I just want to make sure it's the right things. (laughs) Yeah. So I'll do a brief introduction. Um, I've known, I'm just, I'm calling you B Wood just because that's how I've always known you. Um, I've known B Wood now for gosh, how long has it been? Over ten years. It's yeah. been about ten years. It's been honestly been like thirteen. Wow, thirteen, fourteen years. Yeah. Wow. Well, B Wood is a what are you a licensed mental health counselor? Licensed mental health counselor and um you know i'm an, a professional artist too yeah. yeah so i uh wanted to bring you on to discuss obviously the art therapy um and kind of the impacts that you've seen it have on clients and stuff like that because you do a lot of work with substance abuse mm-hmm. uh in particular treatment centers in the area um but i'll let you tell all that and then maya she's here for support in case I say the wrong thing or don't ask the right questions, Maya's here to save Which me. Which is bound to happen. Yeah, yeah. Probably several times. Yeah, but you could end up saying the wrong thing, too. You're known I mean, for that. I don't know about that, but... I mean, just go back a few episodes. Even and... when I say the wrong thing, Thomas, it's the right thing. Ah, uh, see? There you go. <laughs> um, so let's just jump right into it, Brian. I, I want you to first discuss where you're from... You're, you've been here in Palm Beach County for a long time. Uh, just talk a little bit about that, how you got involved in art, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, so I'm originally from Barbados, and I came here in uh, 94 for college. Um, so I went to college, and I initially was pursuing another career. Which was that? What was that? Architecture. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but you know, I worked at a firm for a while and then it was like, you know, this ain't my calling. 
Wow. You know, um, yeah, it wasn't for me. I didn't feel it was, uh, it was, it just wasn't for me. Um, but I, I got into um, psychology when I was in um, college and I had some really good professors and, and um, I had, I was initially studying art at the time. It was a major of mine, but then I switched careers for psychology. I st- also still did art too. Um, but I had, um, worked at a psych hospital at, while I was in college and when I got out, when I was doing my master's and I, wor- I ended up working at a hospital for 14 years. It was my only main job. That was St. Mary's, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I moved up the ranks while I was there. You know, I started out with like being a um, behavioral tech like for a year. And then after that, while I was doing that, I, was, I did trainings to help with the crisis prevention so I would train like all the staff, the security guards, the ER, um, just to give them the tools they needed to deescalate and just to um, help protect themselves and the clients, you know? So I did that for a couple of years and I transitioned from that because um, I had some pretty good supervisors there as well too. And I, I transitioned from that to the discharge coordinator and I was doing my master's at the time but that job is extremely hard. Pull the mic up a little bit closer oh, to you. Sorry. That's all right. There you yeah, go. that job was extremely hard uh, <clears throat> because I, I was handling all the aftercare for all the clients that were needed treatment, um, had nowhere to live. Um, I mean, all the modalities when it comes to like aftercare planning. And um, I would say that was one of the hardest jobs. I had doctors who tell me that's one of the hardest jobs in the hospital. Um, But, you know, from there, you know, it it prepared me for the future. And I put a lot of people into treatment, tons. Uh, A lot of treatment centers that have actually came to fruition that were were extremely strong. You know, I played a part in, like, referring clients to them, you know. Um, And I did that for a a good time of my life, you know. Um, I helped a lot of people get clean. Even there were people that were literally homeless, nowhere to live, and... I got them the help they needed and they made 180s. I have so many amazing stories from that. And when I, when I see him, I was like, I can't believe this person actually had this 180, you know? Uh, I take a story of one, I had this guy, super psychotic, and his mom didn't want anything to do with him. And he had been back and forth from the hospital a couple of times. And I was like, I got to help this kid out, you know, because um, there's no help for him. I mean, he didn't even have insurance, but because I had made referrals to this program for a while, they, they did me a solid. I sent him there, and a year later, I got a call on my phone. Hey, Brian, it's me. I just want you to know that I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for what you did for me. I was like, this is crazy. This is the same guy. I mean, I didn't even think in a million years he was going, to, he was going clear yeah. like that. Five years later, I was at a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale and I'm eating and this guy is a waiter. I was like, this guy looks familiar. And it was the guy, you know what I mean? Wow. And it was like, just to know that I played a part to help, you know, was phenomenal. But I have tons of stories like that. But yeah, and, um, you know, I did a lot of therapy there too, you know, when it came to counseling and um, also the arts, <clears throat> but while I was there, it was also the Baker Act coordinator at the hospital. The Baker Act coordinator? Yeah, it was Baker Act coordinator. So if people needed to be there um, to for extended stay, if the, we didn't think they were safe to actually leave as yet, you know. Um, they would, Real quick, before you get into that, describe mm-hmm. what a Baker Act is for the listeners. Okay, so a Baker Act is somebody who's brought to the hospital and need to be evaluated for 72 hours. They're brought against their will. So if somebody is a suicidal or homicidal or meaning that they're they're danger themselves, mm-hmm. they're brought there just to be evaluated to make sure that they're safe. And um, so within that time period, the psychiatrist and the treatment team decides if this person needs to be discharged within that time span or needs to stay a little bit longer or not. And then they can sign voluntarily if they say, you know what, we need to be stabilized on meds. We're, I'm, I'm, they're aware or my situation is not set yet. So I can sign uh, voluntarily to stay here, extend the stay. But if there's some people that are like, you know what, this person is not going to sign voluntarily. They don't think they need to be here, but they're totally a danger to themselves. 
we would have court hearings held at a hospital uh, where the uh, magistrate comes, pub defender, you know, the psychiatrist there, myself, and another team, and we make sure that, you know, every all the paperwork is, is solid if they need to stay there longer, you know, to make sure that we can keep them there safely, you right. know? Um, because some people are not safe to be on the outside and they're dangerous to their families, but they may not see it. But over time, they may need to be on some uh, medications, injections, for example, to stabilize them. Over time, they come around and they realize the importance of taking the medications, but at that moment, they may not see it. Right, right, right. So how long, you were at St. Mary's for 14 years and a large portion of that, uh, you, you worked your way up the ranks. <clears throat> As far as the art goes, how were you pursuing that simultaneously? So I, I, I literally started it there, you know, and um, so they would have there was uh, there was occupational therapy room, and myself and one other and one occupational therapist that was there, we said, you know, we see the power of having the arts for these clients because it was like a, they're saving grace. So for them that come, they came in and, and they had in this environment that was just like <clears throat> all these moving parts in it. Um, they needed something to calm their minds down. And the arts did a lot for that. You know, um, they were, we, they, there were sometimes there would be directives and sometimes not. But, you know, once they got into it, you just saw how their whole demeanor would change. And a lot of people would look forward to it every day, you know, because it got them out of just their mind and their situations that they were doing their emotions and it brought them to a state of peace. So, at that moment, we said, you know what, we we want to do something that was going to be transformational, but not only help people who are dealing with like addiction or mental health issues, but to help all people. And that that was our ultimate goal. Um, we ended up getting our first contract back in 2011. And from there, we would work on the weekends. We got a couple contracts on the weekends and we built it over time. You know, Your current my, company? Yeah, called Healing Art. Wow. Mm-hmm. Maya, you got anything up to this point? No, I'm just, you know, I'm thinking how fascinating. And also, too, like, I have so much respect for people that work in psychiatric hospitals in that setting, just knowing um, the state of most people that are coming into those facilities and Mm -hmm. the high psych that you're dealing with. In other words, like the psychotic features and, you know, hallucinations, delusions and, you know, mania and You know, and and we see it here sometimes, but they've been, you know, kind of filtered down through, you know, detox and residential. Mm -hmm. And so they're a little bit more stable when they arrive here, Mm -hmm. you know, so I just have a lot of respect for that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, the art piece is such a beautiful thing because I notice, you know, even when I've implemented it in groups here with our clients that it does, it, it, it brings a peace. Like you can just feel the energy shift in the room. When they're engaged in it. Right. When they're engaged. And that's a good point. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and the clients have to be willing to engage in it. Uh, I, the word art brings a lot of fear to people. So, you know, our sessions are, we don't call it art therapy because, you know, it's not that. Mm. It's more experiential. They're psychoeducational. And we create directives to help people manage emotions, work through traumas, and our biggest things to allow people to focus on being the best version of themselves. And the arts help that. So what we're doing is we're actually working on both sides of the brain, the, the, the right and the left. You know, a, a lot of people are just focused on left brain so much, but the right brain is about creativity. And the right brain allows us to, once we've developed that, we can, we can actually manage emotions better. Mm. So the like the three parts of the brain that we really, we've really tried to focus on, you know, the, um, the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the prefrontal cortex. So the hippocampus focuses on memory, and the amygdala focus focuses on emotion, and the prefrontal cortex focuses on thinking. So what we're actually doing when we do these sessions, the, the sessions that we have, they are it's not arts and crafts. We actually have structured directives that we provide to the clients, and they can be as creative with the directives as they want to. But people want direction. They don't want to just be told, okay, draw. You know, There's a level of that that is good. But for, for the majority of people in programming, they want direction because they want to improve their lives. So when we provide the directives, we may have a quote we may start with, and then we go into giving them the directives that they need, whether it be, we be focusing on our artists, 
style, or we just focus on working through the anger or anxieties. And, and then from there, we provide them the tools that they need to work through these emotions and develop healthy memory. Because we're not only focus on the situation itself, but what can I do to get to that place of healing? What can I do to be successful? What can I do to work on the issues of my family? So help, help them developing healthy, healthy memory, which is actually what the hippocampus is, like memory. And because a lot of people deal with a lot of trauma and it allows them to work through their trauma. And what's connected to that trauma? Fear. Um, I don't, I doubt, you know, I don't think I can actually heal, but the arts help with that. And the prefrontal cortex was on, focused on thinking. So it gives people choices now. I don't, I no longer need to focus on that. I have no, no way out. The art helps me find that there's a way out. I can visually see myself getting a way out. So once they engage in it, as Maya was saying, this tr- transformation that occurs, but you got to engage. So there's another quick point. You know, people will come in as like, oh, I can't draw, I suck at art. But, you know, once again, people focus on realism when it comes to art. And that art is hard to do. That's, prof- that's for professional artists. We want to focus more on emotion and expressionism. How can I express my art the best way I can, even, even if it's stick figures, but get to the point where you can actually get out that, that emotion or get out what you want to visually see yourself get it to the next level. You know, there's a lot there that I find fascinating and I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, here's the thing. I would normally say I'm not an artist, but I remember I I went to Palm beach state and there was a professor there and he's still a professor there. And I can't remember his name for the life of me, but it was, um, an art appreciation class, you know, a a basic Mm -hmm. general, Mm -hmm. general class. And in the beginning of the class, like in, in the first few weeks, I'm like, oh, oh gosh, this is like, you know, <laughs> stupid and blah, blah, blah. But as the class went on, I don't remember when in the class, but he had a, I don't know if he had the actual book. I don't think he did. But he had talked about an artist that created a book. And in this book, there's nothing in it. Mm. There's zero words. It's just blank pages. You would consider it a journal. You know, it's just blank pages. The cover has had something on it and the back of the book had something on it, but in the middle there was nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. That's just a, you know, that's a book with blank pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. And he's like, but to that person, it was art. And that person was intentional about this being art. And that is what made it art. It Mm -hmm. made it art to them. It yeah. doesn't matter how you perceive it. It's what it meant to that person. Right. And this is, at that time, was the only person that put out a piece like this that called it art. Mm-hmm. And he was very famous for this. I, I have to see if I can remember or figure out who it was. And so that kind of changed my perspective on it. And the only other thing that I want to say before we move on is I like what you say about the brain stuff because... I notice that like, and I don't even know if this has any correlation to the brain stuff, but we know the like the sips and strokes, those art classes that you can sign up for and you go through and they give you direction the whole time. Mm -hmm. I always go into them like Mm -hmm. grumpy Tom, you know, my wife always wants to go to them. Oh, we should go paint, do a painting class. And I'm like, all right, (laughs) you know, got to take one for the marriage team here (laughs) and i'll always go in like i don't want to do this but within five or ten minutes i'm like into it Mm -hmm. you know what i have to get the perfect brush you know and try and and then it becomes like almost a competition for me and then all every single time and i've only done them a handful of times but after i'm like i'm so glad i did that right you know and so i think that goes to show that it doesn't matter who you are if you're willing to engage, you're going to get something out of it. Yeah. 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 And I was thinking too, it's so like, you know, as you, it, as you, as a therapist start to explore all the different interventions and modalities and different ways and means to approach therapy. Um, I've found that anything that's experiential 
is a hundred percent way more effective than like, let's say typical talk therapy. Yes. And I'm going to tell you why you brought up the right left brain piece, which think about it. I'm an EMDR therapist. Mm -hmm. What do we use? Bilateral stimulation. Mm -hmm. It's been my experience and personally too, in my own work that I've done for therapy, I can sit down with a therapist, with you guys, and I can I can tell you everything I've been through in my life, all of the awful trauma from my active addiction, my childhood abandonment issues, and never, ever connect to my limbic system, to my emotion, mm-hmm. to my body. Mm-hmm. In other words, I'm staying right here in my frontal cortex. Yeah. And I've found that I've done a ton of talk therapy to no avail, really, honestly, like like I said, because I'm I've learned, and and us addicts specifically are really good at learning how to dissociate from the body, and disconnect from the emotions, and so and we can do that with or without substances, you know. And not to mention, we live in a society now where whether you're an addict or not, um, we've learned to distract ourselves. We've learned to, you know, be overstimulated. We've learned to focus on external stimulus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that explains a big part of why we are so depressed and anxious Mm -hmm. as a society. We're losing that authentic connection to ourselves, to our body, to our emotions. We're not sitting in mindfulness and sitting still and, and connecting with ourselves. And so every time I've done any kind of experiential work, in, in my own life, mm-hmm. it has a way of, I'm telling you, just throwing me right into it. Yeah. And I can feel like I remember going to a retreat one time and doing breath work that was a guided visualization. So breath work is like, you know, Wim Hof, mm-hmm. very deep, heavy breathing, being guided by a facilitator. And I remember I was laying on a yoga mat with ma- a mask on and they were doing an inner child guided visualization where I was seeing my younger self through while also doing the breath work, mm-hmm. having a conversation with my younger self. And uncontrollably, I just started like, I mean, like that deep, like ugly crying, like, <gasps> you know, like I couldn't stop it. And I could feel deep in my body this stuff that had been buried so deep releasing I mean, that's the best way I can articulate it with language because it's it's experiential, right? Yeah, it's yeah. one of those things. And so, like, it's so cool. I think I hands down am a proponent of anything experiential that allows that right brain, left brain, you know, bilateral type of work to happen so that they can get into the body and into the limbic system. Yeah. So Was that the thing you went to in California? No, that was that was Sad Guru that was in California. You know who that is? No. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that J Lo just put out like a short, like did you see that new film she put out? Like Oh, so yeah, it was um that was weird. Well, yeah, but do you did you I watch, watch it? I watched me and my wife. We were scrolling through because it's on Apple TV. I think yes, we saw it. And again, you know, my wife's like, "Oh, J Lo, we should watch this." And I'm like, oh, okay. "It was like a big mu- music video." That yeah, and so we kind of went into it thinking that it was going to be kind of a documentary about her. That's what I thought. And it, it, we so we got like ten minutes into it. So and did you see it. the part where they were showing everyone up in the heavens looking down at her? And Post Malone was one of them, and I don't there was know. a bunch of fans. Sad I think Guru I, was there. I put my phone. <laughs> I was scrolling. He was Instagram. there. I'm like, what is he doing there? Because yeah. <laughs> he's like a famous guru. But no, that was at. Um, Center for Spiritual Living in Fort Lauderdale. Is that I, guy with a big beard? Yes. Oh, I know you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. yeah. Um, so take us through, you You work at a lot of treatment centers and you've been doing this a long time. Take us through like a, a setting, a class, like what it consists of from the point that you walk in to the point that you wrap it up. Like walk us through that. Okay. So, I mean, there's a lot of setup that goes in, into it. And the why there's a lot of setup is that I want to make sure that clients have everything they need and they can't come in there and say they can't draw. Because even though our sessions, you don't have to draw because they're famous artists that do writing, you know? So if a client comes in and says, oh, I can't draw. I was like, you could write, uh, you know? 
So we can get- I pause you there real quick? Yeah. Just because I don't want to lose this. And I meant to say this before. In terms of art is, is uh, I don't know if it's the right word, subjective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, to, it's your own imp- interpretation. I consider this podcast a form of art. For sure. 100%. You know, especially in the the, the editing part, you mm-hmm. know, and you see, I'll sit in front of that dang computer for eight hours straight yeah. working on the thumbnail that is like, you know, so anyways, I, I would consider yeah, and this. the way you've designed the studio yeah. and yeah, I mean, that's sure. all art. Yeah. 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 So go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lost my train of thought. You set oh, yeah. them you were up. talking about the setup. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want anybody to come in there and say they can't create because they're famous artists that just write, you know, and they write creatively and their artwork sells for millions of dollars. So, I mean, we have everything, whether it be chalk pastel, oil pastel, um, markers, stencils. So, you know, they have you can't no ex- screw up. You can't screw up. You have no excuse. Yeah. And they're famous artists that use stencils too. That are millionaires. So I even let them know that. So what if they come in there to have all these fears? But you know, as you said, like how you went to your the session with your wife, you know, as soon as they're getting into it, you know, their whole demeanor changes. So everything is set up for them there. And then we have a quote at the beginning, because every session we have a quote, you know, and um that goes along with the directive. And and just say that directive connects to an artist's style. Like we may talk about an artist called maybe Mark Rothko. And Mark Rothko just focused on, you know how that, that book that like you said was just empty? His um, artwork was just focused on just like a color. Just one straight color. And that would be his emotion for the day, his anger. And this artwork goes for tons of money. And people just sit there and just look at this. Sometimes we use rags to paint or brushes or do different brush strokes, but he would be secretive. All one color? Yeah, all one color. Or he would have two colors. The how we have like opposites going on throughout the day. Yeah. You know, um, I might feel really joyful in the morning, then get frustrated later on. Interesting. And just talking about that. And people just sit there and just look at his art and just look at it. And then, you know, you just see, okay, I can actually understand what he's going through. Like you were talking about with the book, you know? So it's subjective. But, you know, if you are willing to engage and see where the artist is coming from, then you can get a lot out of it. So you mean we talk about we talk about an artist um, maybe Jean Michel Basquiat uh, he he mm. intentionally painted like a little Love kid he like this you know um, instead of holding his paintbrush like this like he held his paintbrush like this and it's really crazy looking style but you know there was so much meaning to it because he would actually talk about stuff that was happening in the community you know or his own personal emotions and um, so we give them the directive and from those for example and then they get into it. And they create. And uh, while they're creating, we may come around, provide assistance as needed. But once they start getting into it, get into it. And um, from there, after, after all that's done, then we, we're gonna have, we have a small sharing portion to allow them, give them the opportunity to share if they want to. We don't force a sharing, but it gives them the opportunity to share. And as they're sharing, they're empowering each other, applauding for each other. And then at the end, we have a, a some tools or skills they can take away we we have talking points, so a lot of our directors too would incorporate storytelling, and storytelling is another form of, form of art. And incorporating storytelling in therapy is good because why? Because people remember the stories more than anything else. Because like like stories from AANA, you remember the stories. Yeah. And said, so if these people can do that, I can do it. You know. Um. So we incorporate a lot of like the skills, whether it be AA or NA or cognitive behavioral therapy or didactic behavioral therapy, we put all that stuff into the directives. So they have a, another way to see therapy, another way to, to heal. Instead, just focus on the talk therapy all the time, you know? Uh, and I think experiential therapy is actually transforming therapy now where mm-hmm. people can see the benefits of it. Instead of sitting there and talking, 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 talking all the time, you see people that actually are actually starting to gain change from just being involved in using their hands more and doing like the weightlifting, like how you guys have here, you know, the exercise that like you guys put so much energy into that. And a lot of your clients I've seen have made major transformations from that, you know, so it's healthy. So I'm a big component of the arts and music and all that because it really brings change. So that's my, my setting of how things are done. 
So when the clients are in there, um, how would you handle somebody that, you know, they're not engaging right off the bat? Like, do you work with them in a way like it, which I'm sure you have, you know, you have your, you could probably tell in the first five minutes who's going to be really into this and then who's not, you know, they got their hood up and the, mm-hmm. you know, they're just not, you know, you can tell. How would you engage somebody like that? It all depends. Sometimes I'm going to give them time because it all depends on a couple of things. You know, they may be coming in to the program for the first time. They may be still under detox. Um, they might be just dealing with a lot into personal issues and they might not, they might not want to be, it's not that they might not want to be engaged. They might not want to be engaged at that moment. But as they see their community being engaged, a lot of those people end up coming around the next session, yeah. you know? So I really try not to force that stuff on them. Cause I said that the art and stuff fear brings a lot of fear to people. And also too, they may have experienced, had bad experiences at other programmings where the, 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 the directives that they were giving or they, they were just told, okay, just draw. And I get that a lot from clients. It's like, I never thought these sessions were going to be like this because a lot of programs I went to, I, we just had people just came in and just told to draw stuff, you know? And it, it, it wasn't what we wanted, you know? So I think a lot of them to see, bring a directive that's going to be impactful uh, for where they're at in their recovery at that time, whether it be mental health or sobriety. And over time, they come around. When you, you say, go ahead. You said a couple times they that it's common for them to have fear around the art. Mm-hmm. What do you think that's about? I think a lot of it has to do because they focus on perfectionism and they see art. Is a lot of it has to do with not being educated on the art. Yeah, yeah. And because they're not educated on it, they assume art is one way. The realism. Yeah. That you may see like the, the there's a painting behind us with a fish. Yeah. Okay, that's how my art got it. supposed to look. Right, you know? so they're feeling that it's not good enough. Right. And so why even tr- bother? Right. You know, it's interesting. It reminds me of that client that we just recently had that was a phenomenal artist. Oh, like yeah. he would just sit there and sketch, and I mean just so talented. And he, at one point, you know, the first couple of weeks he he was here, he, t- he stopped drawing. He said, I'm not doing it anymore. I, I'm not good enough. And I said, wow. I couldn't believe that. I said... That's interesting. I said, from my perspective, and I know, you know, art's subjective, of course, but from my perspective, you are very talented. And he's like, well, yeah, but you're not, you don't know professional art. Like, and, you know, and to hear that, it just crushed my soul. Mm -hmm. Like, how sad, because number one, it was a massive outlet for this kid. Mm -hmm. Number two, he was actually extremely talented um, and, and was not willing to, I guess, you know, continue with it or or hopefully he will you know i'm hoping that that was just a moment he was having um but and you know and and it's it, the whole thing it just is you i think that's a big piece you're right it's like uh we so many of us learn that you know we need to be perfect at everything we set these unrelenting um really high expectations on ourselves and i think in that specific situation he this individual Um, I think he knew deep down that his art was good, Yeah, but it was such an internal thing for him that I think he grew up not feeling good enough really in any aspect of his life and that he had very big shoes to fill. Yeah. So even though his art and I saw because that we have our staff meeting every Monday Mm -hmm. and before our staff meeting, we have a, um, uh, group, a group. And in this group, he was, he was sketching and he had left it in there. And so we walk in for staffing and I picked up this just notebook and it was like a skull drawing. And it was, I mean, I wish I, I had, I known I would have taken it out of the, I would have ripped it out and kept it, but unbelievable, like the detail. And he did it all in a matter of two hours. And, uh, and I remember asking him about that. I'm like, Hey man, what? Like, that was good. Why'd you just leave it in the, in the, in the room? And he's Mm -hmm. like, that wasn't good. That wasn't. 
And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah. So, but it's an interpersonal thing. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And, and those are the things that we really try to work on while we're in sessions too, you know? Yeah. Um, and you said, like, like glad you said it, but the, the history, you know, and not thinking they're good enough. Yeah. And which a lot of people struggle with, not only in addiction outside of that, you mm. know, uh, what's, what's my value? What's my worth, you know? But we really try to uh, push legacy and your purpose and how, how do I actually attain legacy? You know, believing in myself and receiving the love because the hardest thing people receive in programming is love. You know, like people see the rules and just the, the things that you guys give here as, 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 as being stringent and like, you know, like, um, I can't live my life. But we just guiding them to find their truth. And if they were to change their perspective when it comes to being in treatment, you know, their whole life would change. Um, so yes, a lot has to do with their his their their past and working through that, you know, and the experiential stuff helps with that. The you you said a couple times you would give them directives. Mm-hmm, what mm-hmm. does that mean? Like a uh, a lesson, you know, an actual. Can you plan. give us an example of like a direct like? A, do you have an example of like a quote and a directive that you would use? Yeah, you give, let me get away with my stuff, but I'll oh, get, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Just it's, use it's one. It's copyrighted, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're not allowed to use it. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so um, let's we'll see if it's a good one. Um, there's one. There's a quote by this um guy called David Russell. It says, "The hardest thing to learn in life is which bridges to cross and which bridges to burn." The Ooh. hardest thing, you That's know. That's a good quote. And with that quote, we start out with that quote with the director that we have for that day, that lesson for the day. So I focus, I, th- I, I give them, I tell them, listen, don't just focus on drugs and alcohol here. Really think about other things you got going on in your life. What are the bridges you got to cross right now in your life that's really hard, but you know it's a must for you. And what are some things you got to burn to get ahead? You know, um, think about it in the sense of relationships or, you know, your anxiety, you know, um, goals, and when they when they actually put themselves in that space instead of just focusing on drugs and alcohol, they actually say, "Wait, well, you know what? I really want to pursue this business, but I got fears that you know it ain't gonna work out for me, you know, because of all the things mistakes I've made, you know. But you know, let them know that that back and forth, like the DBT, opposite action, mm-hmm. that stuff happens to everybody. Everybody goes through that, you know, but." You know, then we would. You give- should explain that because people aren't going to know it. And DBT stands for dialectical behavioral yes, therapy, yeah. and Sorry. they talk about dialectics being that t- you can have two opposing uh, forces. ideas, yeah. forces, beliefs be true at the same time, yeah. right? Versus it, it doesn't. It's not the black or white, mm-hmm. all or nothing type of thinking. Like you know, I can love you and also hate you at the same time, Thomas. I'm borderline. referring to you specifically. Yeah. No, not just borderline personality yeah. disorder. This is everybody. This yeah. is well, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. 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 So everybody <laughs> everybody goes through those things, you know? And to let people know that like, we all go through that. So we have a directive where, for example, we may talk about uh, artists that deals with that. And we will go through their lifestyle and how they were, they were dealing with opposites, you know? And like, I go back to treatment you know, the big, a big uh, opposite people deal with, I want to be in treatment, I'd rather be home, you know? But we talk about what are the pros and cons of being here? You know, the pros, their structure, I learned skills, but some cons about being here, you know, the rules can be very challenging. It can be stressful, or for some people it's bored, I'm bored, you know what I mean? But then if you're home right now, you could have the comfort of your home, back at work, making your money. But if you left the program before your time, consequences are relapsing, letting your family and friends down, letting yourself down, so we have we we have these lessons because we have powerpoints, you know. I'm re- I'm really big on visualization. I like to see things visually, you know, because it's it, we really want people to learn, you know. And um, people everybody doesn't learn from reading a book or just talking all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. They need to see things visually. And how how can I visually apply this situation to my life? And then when they have all these points up on the screen, they can actually okay, I can incorporate this into my art. You know, this quote, they write the quotes down, they put it into the artwork, whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, from that, they create from there, from this, seeing this piece of paper that they, they would have or on the screen, and they can actually see what they need to do. To so do you give them like a prompt? Like the yeah, prompt the, is like 
t- uh, for that quote. Yes. What would you like prompt them? Okay. Like, um, so, so um, create your your opposite. What's the opposite you're dealing with in your life right now that you really want healing for? Uh, so, for example, you can put you can put writing in it. Um, you can put images in it. Yeah. So we have artists that would do writing and imagery in their artwork. So then, uh, for example, I want to be in this relationship. Some days I want another relationship. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to go work out. I don't want to go work out. That's so funny. we have these <laughs> <laughs> these opposites that we all deal with. And we have, we have colors that go along with it too. You know, yeah. they can choose colors, but they can use their own, just recommended things they can, they can put into the artwork, just enhance it, you know, to connect with those emotions. You know, so um, as I said, experiential, I don't want to ever call it art therapy, a, a more experiential yeah. kind of therapy. And actually in Florida, I know, I don't know about the rest of the country, but you have to actually have mm-hmm. a degree in art therapy. Mm-hmm. They're like really weird about it. Oh, really? Yeah. To like call yourself an art therapist, mm-hmm. you have to actually have that degree. You can incorporate art into therapy, obviously. Oh. Um, it's just weird, you know. It's well, is it weird? I mean, that's 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 yeah. their therapy, you know what I mean? But our things that we never really wanted to be labeled as that, you know, our stuff is more experiential, psychoeducational, yeah. And we really want to reach a population, I mean, a bigger population for just recovery. We really want to reach businesses, you know, going to the business sector of, of creatives, you know, like okay, you guys are so stressed out here, we have some skills that can help you move forward. You know, Ugh, that can, would be so good. Yeah. In like you know? a corporate setting. Yeah. Because, where they're like punching numbers and like it's all like high stress all day. Like right, get them in right. a room and like yeah. have them create some. For sure. Yeah. I mean, and once they engage in it, I'm, I'm 100% guaranteed that they can get a, a lot out of it. Because even in our sessions right now, you know, we have like a 99% um, um, engagement rate. You know, it might be the 1%. As I said, it goes through that rough time at the beginning, but they end up, a lot of them end up coming around. You know, so yeah, we need to get him in here, Thomas. Yeah, I was, I was thinking for the staff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's valid. I think we could, we could, we could work that out to yeah. have you come in and do something like that with mm-hmm. us for a couple hours or something. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. paint a little happy well, just tree. Just so you know, as program director now, I have a couple things in store. Like I'm currently looking for trauma informed. Tr- on-site training to come in i've reached out to a couple of people so i'm in the process of that for the entire staff and then doing something like that would be really cool yeah team building stuff <laughs> paintball <need> paintball <laughs> i'm like team building tom's like yeah let me just shoot you all with a, a giant paintball that will give us a good sense of camaraderie <laughs> well you're obviously doing really good work uh let's talk a little bit about kind of the impact you've had on the community not even so much the substance abuse and treatment centers, but you've done a lot, um, I think, for West Palm Beach and, you know, the community of West Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I mean, a couple of things, you know, um, I, I was involved in this nonprofit art center, downtown West Palm, called the Armory Art Center. And um, we initially started a um, program for human trafficking teens. Um, that's, we did start that back in 2015. And um, the goal was to help teens that were traumatized, you know, through human trafficking. And the stories from those girls were just traumatic. You know, I mean, um, it was it it was a hard population to work with. I mean, I worked with some hard clients, but that was a very hard population at that age to see what they've been through. Hmm. Um, It was traumatic. See Um, that? I don't think I'd be able to do that. Mm. just being honest i don't think i'd be able to sit through that yeah mm. it was hard you know but i mean we were more as as a wraparound service for them you know whereas they knew it they, they, they were already getting therapy and but you know they were able to come in and we would just that those sessions were more focused on the art we did have the component of like giving some therapeutic skills but the emphasis was more on the arts for them there and they had a lot of a lot of girls that got a lot out of it um, they, the program, we really tried to f- open it up for boys as well, too, because there were a lot of boys that were dealing with it as well. But, you know, the boys are going to be a lot harder to want to end up being open and just coming into a program. So there was a time, some years passed, the years went on, and we ended up opening it for more mental health so where boys and girls can come. So we had a wide variety of 
teens that were coming in and um, doing the arts. And Where were you doing that at? At the Armory Art Center. The oh, Armory yeah. Art Center yeah, in, in downtown, downtown? Downtown West. Is that Brown. on Daytura or Clematis or something? Um, it's actually on Tamarind, you know, uh, and um, Okeechobee. There's that, that big field, um, the Martha Luther, not Martha Luther King. Um, I forget the name of the park. Um, but then there's this fire station there. It's right downtown. Okay. You can't miss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by, yeah. Oh, I know exactly where you're at. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have two programs there. There's the um, program for, um, it's called Art of the Phoenix. And um, that's for, for the, um, that was for the traffic continue, but it's all for kids now. And then um, the other one is called Brave Hearts. It's a VA program, um, which I helped at times run. But the, the the veterans can come there as a, once again as a wraparound service. Yeah, that they can come there and get assistance, but they have to have gone through treatment yeah. at the VA. Same as as the girls or kids at the programming, they have to have gone through any kind of treatment first. They can't just come there and say, "Okay, mate, I'm here to get therapy." You know, it's not for that. You know, it was just a wraparound service for them. Right. You know, to help enhance. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that is still going on. Um right now but not 100 percent at this moment but we work we contract for a lot of programs at legal aid society boys town um what was the first one you said legal legal, legal aid. aid legal aid okay so like the like if there were kids that were taken out of their home or safe houses um that you know the the lawyers and stuff would contact me and look at we have some kids here that need some kind of um programming you know so they already get therapy but you know they'll come there and drop them off you know a bunch a bunch of kids um, or, or, you know, um, boys town, you know, kids that were dealing with stuff at home, art school, behavior problems, drugs, alcohol, they can come there while, the, while they get in therapy. Once again, the wraparound service. I mean, I mean, the kids did good work. We had a good pro, it was a good program. You get all the art supplies for free, you know, yeah. and, um, you get a professional cause just not me at the armory. It would be a professional artist that I'm working with and myself, we, we will build a directive you know, to help them, you know, and we, we actually just finished um, mur- muraling. So we did a massive mural with the kids. Where you at? Know, uh, at the armory. Oh, know? at the armory. Yeah, yeah, at the armory. So, um, oh, but really? I've done, yeah, I've done two. One was actually spray painting and it was actually on the big wall in the back. Like graffiti? Massive graffiti, <gasps> yeah. It was massive. My favorite kind of art. Yeah. It was Wait, good. is this after the mural you did? The skateboarding No, one? this is before. I'll get to that, but okay. this is before. This All is right. before. But this is, but, yeah. And um, then we did another mural just as, as of recent. But the Armory has different um, different things there. There's like painting, there's drawing, there's um, ceramics, jewelry making, you know. So cool. Uh, really? fa- fashion, yes. So we did all these with the, with the teens. So um, different seasons have different things. Uh, same with the VA. Um, the VA, we had... Um, those same kind of things going on. Um, also, metalworking. You know, we worked with the people oh, metalworking. Wow. They made they made a massive eagle. You That's know, so cool. But the thing is about them coming together and creating. You know, it did a lot for them. And once again, um, the the experiential stuff is good. So then, um, I did a, a mural for the city. You know, um, the, my mural for the city came about because I was in a show at the Culture Council, which is a really good um, space in downtown Lake Worth. And it was like top artists are in there. But I was in a show there uh, with some other artists and the city of Palm Beach County saw my work and they reached out to me and they asked me to do a mural for the city. Now, when they initially asked me to do it, I thought it was going to be like a wall like this, like small wall, you know? <laughs> When she took me down the hallway, the alleyway, and showed me where it was at, yeah, I freaked out. I was like, "How in the world?" You know, they had all these wires on it and pipes, and like, the wall was like, like really rough. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, but you know, I figured it out, and um, it's still there today. For um, it's been like there for like over two years now. Yeah. Where's that at? Um, I'll take you down and see it. Yeah. I want to see it. It's 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 pretty amazing. And I remember, I think we were, you and I were at dinner and you had told me about this opportunity that you had. And I remember you were like, I don't know how I'm going to pull this <laughs> off, but it's pretty cool. And then what was even more cool was um, when the mural was done, the city put on 
like a, a skate jam. So it, yeah. the mural is all of skateboarding. And it's on downtown West Palm um, on Daytona between Olive and Dixie. Um, so it's on the back of a building. Um, but, you know, um, the and the mural is called Energy, you know, and it's about, you know, bringing community together, skate community together. You know, when we come together, like we can do great things. And um, we had an actual skate jam because actually two people that worked in the government, they skated. Wow. And, um, they were older, but they skated, yeah. you know, and um, they wanted to have this big skate jam going on to bring attraction to the mural. So we had this, they shut the street down and we had a big skateboard it jam. It was cool. That's it was cool. so cool. A lot, of pro, a lot of pros came. A lot of my friends from Miami that were pro came. Wow. It was amazing. They had DJs. I mean, it was phenomenal. And that was, an, I don't know if you have heard that water, um, liquid death water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when that, they were just coming out. So they had, they had sent a lot of water to it, you know. Yeah. It was cool. Very you know, cool. um, I don't think it, there's never been anything like that downtown since. Yeah. You know? um, but, you know, um, just to see that, you know, bringing community together. Because my goal, I want to bring people together. That's the whole purpose of that mural anyway. Yeah. You know, um, is the mural of people skateboarding? Yeah. All m- myself is in there and a lot of my friends. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, what else? I mean, I did I did a mural for um, a painting, actually, uh, for um, Boys Town. For their um, 30 years of service and the 60,000 kids that is service here in Palm Beach County. Um, and that is actually in the corporate office in um, off of Palm Beach Lakes. Um, but yeah, I've been doing, doing some stuff and trying, try, I want to do more, you know? Um, so just taking it in strides. Well, that, that skate party thing was really cool. I, we took Levi. I think Levi would have been six maybe late five or six years old and um he was in heaven oh he loved it (laughs) yeah and i'll tell you and because you didn't talk about this at all but b wood is a phenomenal skateboarder are you yeah i'm I'm okay i can handle (laughs) (laughs) and uh so ever since my son levi was a year or two old as a matter of fact fun fact the whole reason nicole works here is when me, B. Wood, and my son were at the skate park and he was showing Levi some some things on just basic skateboarding and stuff. And uh, I think one thing led to another. You were like, are you looking for a therapist? Right. And at the time, I'm like, yeah, as a matter of fact, we are. Yeah, and, and that's... Called Nicole, well, I knew and then, that's how we got Nicole. Was yeah, yeah. Through Brian. Mm-hmm. But it was at the skate park. and um, But that, that skating event was amazing yeah, and was. uh levi got his own skateboard they came and gave him a skateboard oh, but wow. there had to have been there were like 600 people there yeah, yeah i mean it was it was jamming there was the one guy there that had the drums so that guy uh um his son is a is a pro skater um his name is zion Wright. um he actually is like uh on some pretty big company red bull and stuff like that mm-hmm. and just a just a fun fact. Like I remember back in the day, like he used to go to his dad used to go to all these um, um salons and get people CDs. Here, here, my son. You know what I mean? He's gonna be famous one day. And like, oh. yeah, whatever, you know. And he yeah, is <laughs> crazy. You know what I mean? Like, and was he there? The no, son? He didn't come. He didn't come because uh, I think they were preparing anyway for the Olympics. Oh, uh, yeah. he was in the Olympics. Is skating in the Olympics? Yeah, yes. it's in the Olympics last last Olympics is going to be in the Olympics coming up again yep. too. Like the half first type. Time. Everything, everything, street and vert. You know? Street, what street? You know, like street stairs, like, rails. Yeah. Those oh, kind of okay, yeah, 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 freestyle, if you will. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so she knows. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I try. I tried. I dipped my feet in skateboarding when I was I, younger, I could and see then that. I totally one day just killed my shin. And I was. I never did it again. I was like, I. I was in so much pain. It was bad. It was pretty bad. Remember when we were at the skate park, like, I don't know, six months ago, out here in gardens? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to go down just... <laughs> <laughs> I fall hard. Yeah. Like, you know, even the the ramp itself is only, like, two feet off the ground with a very slight grade, and I I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. just that you short of... almost got it, though. I almost did, yeah. but... Well, yeah. I've been, I, I need to dial it back. You know, these days I'm getting a little older. So like I went skiing, snow skiing last year and that was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> I thought I dislocated my hip, uh, <laughs> but it was fun. I had fun. But you're skating, you skate what every day? 
I wish. I, I only go like three days in a week, you know. I got, That's a good amount. Yeah, it's though. good enough, you know. Um, I have to have time, for, a margin for other things like my painting and, you know, I got my family and you know, my daughter and stuff like that. So I just try to be mindful. But um, I just started a skate group through my church. Um, through CF? Yeah. I just started through uh, Christ Fellowship, yeah. So like um, where um, people can come and any skating, um, it would be once a month we're meeting right now and we meet at different skate parks. Oh, really? Uh, Thomas, might... you should do it. No. Rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> he said any skating. Yeah, any skating. I just try to be open for everybody. But yeah, there's there are girls. If, I made it for girls and guys, you know, uh, women, sorry. Um, but yeah, 18 and up, you know, just try to have that mature. But I mean, if somebody's younger and they want to attend, they can attend. Um, but I just try to, I want to have the matureness there. And um, we might do a Bible verse, where we meditate it for the month, um, prayer time. You know what I mean? Oh, that's so, cool. I mean, I think it's cool. And the last last time I had it, you know, it was pretty impactful. So I'm just trying to build it, see where it goes. You know, but I want to yeah. do stuff. As I said, you know, I, I believe I have all this stuff in me to do. But, you know, it's just about getting out and getting the opportunities to do it, you know? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I feel the same way, too, with the podcast and everything. I mean, it's like there's not enough hours in the day, and then the day's gone. On to the next one. Yeah, and then he's neglecting, you know, us when he's doing that. So. <laughs> That's, I mean, she's not wrong. I know. It's true. Um, all right. So tell us a little bit about your uh you you have the uh y- your company where to find the company um and then I know you have the Etsy the Etsy store uh, do, are you still doing do that you, yeah it, it's just my for my skate my, my skate brand my, my skate brand yeah my you have a skate brand yeah my skate merch yeah. yeah so I have shirts long sleeve short sleeve um stuff for kids. Yeah, but it's and you do the artwork painting. on yeah, it. Yeah, the artwork on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to get it. So yeah. we had a well, photo. Tell. We took a photo years ago yeah. when my son was probably two or three, and um, he was standing on a skateboard, and like the 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 skate board was tilted up yeah. i don't know what you would call that yeah yeah and uh so we had a picture of that and then b wood actually painted it a full-on wow. a palette pet with palette knife though very Not cool paint. it's really cool i'll show you after and i'll put okay. it in, i'll put it in the youtube video as well yeah. um but yeah so th- it, people can find that where um so etsy is um art um b wood art b wood yeah a r t b w o o d yeah and um yeah i have the merch on there and um if anybody's interested in healing arts or incorporating uh, he- that art is um healing art llc um dot com and um you'll see like uh, a promotion or promotional video so you give you an idea of like how the sessions are run i mean it's a minute a minute and 20 second video mm-hmm. but at least you have an idea of like what we're doing uh how how we merge um the arts with some kind of counseling you know, and um, you see our team there and our phone numbers on there, our email, so you can contact us, you know, and um, we uh, are contractors. So we contract with rehab centers, mental health facilities, businesses, you know, coming in here shortly. Um, so, yeah, you know, I just did um talk um, in November, I believe, for this, um, for the art district in Boynton. Um, so we had over like a, I think we're almost close to a hundred people there, the, um, Palm Beach Foundation have, have put it on and they're really trying to push the newer arts right now. Um, so I just talked about the importance of having um, murals in downtown, murals and like structures in downtown West Palm and how that helps people once they engage in it. Like we talked about the engagement. Um, why, why are these murals coming up around the cities and the stairwells and the alleyways? And it's to help. The city's already in this in process of helping people with their mental health because you know that's a big topic right now, mental health. So, by them, when we, by them having artists create these murals in the cities, the alleyways and the stairwells, creating new experiences for people who had trauma or who are struggling with anxieties. You know, oh my gosh, there's more traction of people heading on these alleyways now. I don't have all this fear of going to the alleyway or this stairwell anymore because it's really good art and people are engaging with it. Oh, and yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm, it's, I'm actually helping well, my anxiety. It's beautiful too. Yeah, you know. I mean, talk about adding beauty to anywhere. Yes, you know. Is when you talk about mindfulness, a mind, it's mindfulness mm-hmm. practice. Once you engage in the art, you connect with connect with it. Have a rough day at work, engage in the art, boom. Yeah, you know. So that's their whole purpose of doing that. You know, not just putting art just to put it up, 
but they yeah. want to have good art. There's so much meaning behind the art pieces, the murals especially too. It's amazing what they're doing down in West Palm. And I never knew, I never put two and two together. I'm like, they just, you know, wanted to make this ugly beige wall look cool. Yeah. But there's a method behind it and there's a reason behind, behind it. it. But that, the same place where my mural is at, that alleyway, they spent a bunch of money on the on the tile work because um, the tile was taken from this Brazilian artist. And um, a lot of people weren't going down the alleyway. And they initially wanted me to create on that building so they have more traction. And I got, I have so many people tell me, Brent, the only reason I go down that, that um, alleyway now to see your to see your artwork, I go in there every day when I go to work, you know? So it's kind of cool that people are actually engaging with the arts. Didn't you paint one of the dumpsters too? Oh yeah, the dumpsters, they wrapped it with one of my art pieces. And that art piece actually got me into one of the biggest art shows in Palm Beach County at the Cultural Council um, called the Bilineal. And uh, funny, funny story about that is that, you know, I entered it and I had never really knew anything about the bilineal. My, my friend here told me about it. So the, both, it's called the what? The bilineal? Bi- bilineal art okay. show. Okay. So every two years they have it. And uh, so I entered it and we were waiting, waiting, waiting. And he called me. He's like, you got in. I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you got in. Your art piece is on the, it's in newspaper. I was like, what? I looked at it. I was like, what in the world, you know? But that piece that I did, I did of a, a girl skater um, that's here in Palm Beach County. Um, and she ended up doing going pro the next year. And she was on Vans and it's a company called Santa Cruz. You know, it's just wild, you know? And um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. So that art show, the Bilennial, mm-hmm. it would just, your your artwork was up in there and could people purchase it or was it just they, for they, show? No, we could purchase it if they wanted to. Um, they actually had a voting on it. So you can vote which had, who had the best art piece. I didn't win, of course, but it'd be kind of cool. If what I do did. you mean, of course? Don't no, no, say that. Well, no, of course. I shouldn't say that. Yeah. But, um, I didn't win, but um, we're, the person that did win, their art was, was, was phenomenal. They did more of a um, simulation kind of piece where they actually created a beach scene. The light was shining on it. You could see it. It like, looked like water. And at the end, when she, when she won, she danced on it. And all the sand was actually salt. And she danced around. It was kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of cool. cool. Yeah. Do you ever go to uh, the Norton Museum of Art? Yeah, I go there. I Have go you there. been there, Maya? No. Oh, my gosh. It's, Is it good? It's 10 minutes from here. I know. You know, Nicole was telling me, was it Nicole? Yeah, that we should go. So maybe I'll go soon. Oh, Check it's, it out. It's unbelievable. And listen, I'm not, you know, an art person, but going there is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know they would have the they would bring art in from locals. Have you ever had anything in there? Or no, no, no. I mean, I want to. I was asked a while back um, about some engagement with it, but it never came came to. Yeah. But you know, my, my goal of mine is to have my art in a museum. You know, yeah. that's a goal of mine. You know, but they bring in a lot of like outside artists, like professional, like high end artists in there. Yeah. The, the shows are really, really good. But yeah, museums is is a direction I like to take. At some point. Well, this was fun. I yes, it this. was. Yeah. Yes, it was, Tom. Thank Thanks, you for the Brian. opportunity. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was cool to get to know more about you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very so, cool. So, Healing Arts LLC, if you're interested in that, and then art, healing art, not arts, healing, healing art, healing art, art LLC, LLC. and then the Etsy shop is what again? Don't you just throw a thing up on? When you're editing the video, don't you throw like it comes up kind of? Yeah, I'm going to do that too. Okay, well, mm-hmm. handle that. Take yeah. care of that. Art be Art be Wood. Come on, art pers- be Wood yes. is, uh, is the Etsy shop. Yes. Go there and buy some clothing off this man <laughs> and sign yeah. up for Healing Art LLC. Yeah. It'll be good for your company, your business, uh, anything. So thank yeah. you. Maya, any final thoughts? No, just a pleasure. It was cool to talk about things. It's so cool to see like parallels and, you know, when when we're talking about different modalities, like I was saying, like the experiential stuff and it's just a cool thing, you mm-hmm, know? Yeah. I have so much respect for it. Yeah. Thanks, B. Wood. Thank you, Tom. All right. That All right. is it for this episode of Real Recovery Talk. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. In the end, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can always reach us, info at realrecoverytalk.com. Again, that's info at realrecoverytalk.com. And ultimately, we want to help you turn your mess into your message. That is it. We will see y'all later. That's all, folks.